Chapter 3.4 is about proving and ruling a journal. Uh, proving and ruling in journal are going to be done multiple times throughout the uh, fiscal period. Uh, and it's really important because proving and ruling basically are going to give us mathematical proof um, that we're doing things correctly and we're not, uh, we're, we're on track. So let's take a look at proving journal. I've got a sample journal page up here um, filled out. Want to do is we notice in the upper left hand corner we want to prove page one of the journal. So the way we do it is we're going to take our general debit column and we're going to add them all together. And after we add them all together, you'll see that in this case we get 1379. And we're just going to take that number and we're going to put it into the general debit column totals. We'll do the same, then we'll continue the same process for the general credit column total. We'll add them all together and then we will put it in the general credit column as well. Same will go true for sales. We just record the sales credit and that'll go into the sales credit column total. Now notice that there is no entry in the sales debit column totals. That's because we have no sales debit column totals. Um, unless there's a correcting error or an adjusting entry, you're not really going to have uh, a sales debit column total. Uh, cash debit then we'll do the same thing. We'll add up the column see in this case we get 2500 we'll put it in the cash debit column total and then cash credit as well we'll add it all together and we'll put them there now what the big thing that you want to do here and kind of half the reason why we do proving journals is because we want to make sure that we did everything correct so we want to find out do our debits equal our credits so we're going to add in the upper left hand corner we're going to add our debit column totals together and we're going to get a total of 387 38,000, Now we want to add our credit column totals and we want to see if we get that same number. In this case, we've done, we have. This means we've done everything correctly and since we've done everything correctly, well, we can now, we know that we're doing, we're doing it right. So now we move on to what is called proving cash. And when you're proving cash, this will happen kind of at the end of the fiscal period, maybe end of the month and various times too, but we want to prove cash. We know that the beginning balance on February 1 is zero and the balance on the next unused check stub is 1721. And you'll see where those numbers come into play in a second. So we're going to get a form like this and we now need to find out, okay, what was our cash on hand at the beginning of the month? Well, if you look at the transaction, it said the cash balance on February 1 is zero. So therefore, our cash on hand at the beginning of the month is zero. What's our total cash received during the month? Well, our total cash received during our month is going to be our cash debit column. And we are going to, and that's 2,500, so we'll put that right there. Well, zero plus 2,500 gives us 2,500. So we're going to add those two together. And then next is less total cash paid during the month. Well, the cash paid during the month is represented by our cash credit column, and that is 779. And we'll put that right over there then equals cash balance at the end of the month. So we're going to take the 2500 minus the 779 and you'll see that we get 1721. Now this 1721 is important because this number should always equal our checkbook balance on the next unused check stub which in the transaction was 1721. So that's how we can prove cash at the end of the fiscal period, the month, or whatever period you choose to do. Now, Next we want to talk a little bit about what happens if we're working on a journal page and let's just say we run out of space and we have to end a journal page and start a new one because we have so many transactions. Well it's actually a fairly simple process. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to first of all we're going to rule a single line. Now that rule, that single line represents addition. Addition or subtraction. Uh, but in this case it's going to represent addition. That means that we're going to add up each and every column and put a total in. But before that, we need to put an entry in our date and our account title so we know what we're doing when we look at this. So we're going to put the date. In this case, we're doing this on February 27th. Uh, we're going to use the word carried forward. Basically what that means is we're going to take these numbers in this column and we're going to take it and we're going to put it towards the next journal page. So we are going to carry it to the next journal page. Put a check mark in the post reference because none of these will be entered individually. They will all be part of the totals. And now we're just going to add up our columns. We add up our general debit column, we get 1379. We then add up our general credit column, we get 2500. We add up our sales credit column, we get 600. We add up our cash debit column, we get 2500. 
we add up our cash credit column and we get 779. Very simple, very straightforward. After I've done with that and I have verified them, and once I have verified that these are correct, I now rule what is called a double line. And that double line verifies that what I have done, I did it correctly, and those are accurate. So then we get our second page. Well, page the second page of the journal, we need to make sure that we do put page two in the upper right hand corner. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to copy them over to the next thing. And there's a little bit of a, a, a trick here, but it's not too bad. The date we, we ended this journal page on was the 27th, so the date we're going to start the second page is February 27th. Now instead of carried forward, we're going to write the word brought forward. And basically brought forward is going to be used as the way to show that this came from page one. So we know where this information came from. Um, how we got it. We're not going to have a doc number and our post reference we're going to have a check too because these are totals. These are not going to be posted individually so we don't have to worry about these when we start posting next chapter. Now all you have to do now is you basically just have to go down and you have to copy the number from the previous page from the previous um, page when we carried it forward and bring it down into the first line of the new page. Now one, one thing that I would be very cautious of is make sure that you are extremely careful when copying and not transpose numbers and all that stuff. Once you have that done, you're, t you're ready to begin uh, recording transactions in the journal. And by the magic of technology, we recorded our transactions. And now we get to a situation where what happens at the end of the month when you need to record, when you need to finish your journal at the end of the month? Well, it's pretty much the same process. You're going to write, you're going to rule a single line, which means addition. You're going to put the date. Now instead of carried forward and brought forward at the end of the month, you're going to write the word totals. Not going to have a doc number, not going to have a post reference, because those will get posted. Um, and all we do, just like we did with the carried forward and brought forward, is we're going to add the general debit column, then we're going to add our general credit column, we're going to add our sales credit column, add our cash debit column, and add our cash credit column you'll see that we will do that and if you do your math you should also find out that the debits if you add up all the debit columns and all the credit columns they should all equal each other and that is how you prove and rule a journal and that's also how you start a new journal page and uh, finish a journal page at the end of the month or fiscal period and then finally like I said left it out rule a double line to verify that your math is correct